Here's Brody Brazil. Okay, here comes another Sharks video, Your Direction. And this one is actually based on a YouTube comment that I got from David Rubens. He said, Brody, great coverage of Sharks and A's as always. Oh, great. Let's just stop right there. Into the video. Goodbye. Just kidding. Uh, he goes on to say, and by the way, I'm only using portions of his lengthy comment, as you can see. There's more to this, but not the whole thing. I just want to let you know I've, I've taken only sections of this. There is something that I have really wanted to ask you recently, given that the best way to win a Stanley Cup, really does anything else matter at this point, is to rebuild on the back of a superstar caliber player. For example, Crosby, Ovechkin, McKinnon, McDavid, no cup there yet, but very possible with Edmonton, etc. And since we know that they are not going to win a cup this year, why would it not be the best possible strategy for the Sharks to do everything possible this season to ensure that they finish as one of the bottom three teams, thus nearly assuring that they would have the best possible chance to get one of the top three picks in the upcoming draft. He goes on to say, there is some young talent now in the mix for San Jose, in the minors and under contract elsewhere, and it seems to me that adding one more player of elite level talent might just be the best thing moving forward. The Sharks have never had the number one pick in the draft. That's true, even under expansion. And this seems to be the year for it to happen. So how is this not the best strategy? Oh, hi, there's a picture of Connor Bedard there that just also popped up magically. <laughs> I put it there. Uh, you know what, David? That is a great question. That is a true dilemma for a lot of Sharks fans and yours truly. So, so let me let me try and respond from so many different angles here. Number one, to your point, in a salary cap era, how else do you get a generational franchise changing player like Connor Bedard or others? And I and I do realize this is a loaded draft which we will talk about. And I know you're not suggesting getting the 32nd spot in the league. I, I know you're not saying, like you said, top three, finish, or sorry, bottom three, finish bottom three. You're not saying finish complete last. But I understand the gist of what you're saying. This, though, might be the only way to acquire that generational talent. You, you can't trade for it. You can't necessarily hope that it comes in a 27th pick overall or a fourth round pick everybody is hyping up Connor Bedard and the likes because this year's draft is supposed to be that special so to your point that is a dilemma how else do you really do this and look at the blueprint of other NHL teams that have recently done it yeah you do have a point there but I also want to let you know even the 32nd team the last place team in the league standings at the end of the year, if we're talking about the number one pick, they only have an 18.5% chance of drafting first. And if we're talking Bedard, because everybody is, I know you were saying bottom three or top three pick, 18.5% is the chance that it happens. And I'm not even suggesting positioning yourself for that, but even then when you do finish last, it's like less than one in five that you get the ultimate first prize. I also want to say here, if, if I hopefully haven't implied it yet, I'm just going to like lay it on thick and clear here. Finishing low in the standings, no matter if it's bottom three or last or bottom five or whatever, to me, if you're doing sports appropriately, it can only happen organically. Otherwise, it it feels wrong. What I'm saying by that is who can actually angle their team for anything less than success? You know, it, it, organically, if that's where you end up, like somebody's got to, somebody will. Somebody might try, but in my opinion, if, if you are a, a true sports person, you're not angling towards that. If it happens organically, it happens. And the number one reason for me because of that is like current hockey folks. And I'm talking about coaches. I'm talking about front office, I'm talking about players, they have pride and money and careers and livelihoods on the line. Not succeeding means not getting the stats that in turn get them a next contract or a next opportunity or the financials that they're hoping to get in a next deal or the bonuses or whatever. 
how could you in your right mind tell anybody or expect anybody that's actually hands-on with the product to not to not perform and shoot for the top and 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 be not okay with the bottom like how can you tell them anything else than this is what you hope for and stay away from this how could you right i understand though like it's a double-edged sword the only way you get a Connor Bedard is by being last, but who wants to be last? And and yes, the next point here is that some years, some summers, the draft talent seems loaded. And eventually, I ought to do a whole breakdown of everybody else that's in this 2023 draft pool because it it is more than Connor Bedard, but like that has been the early name and the early focus for a lot of teams off to slow starts in the NHL. So there's no question that like this would be a good year overall to have a high pick in the draft, maybe even number one. But I understand that's a true dilemma here. And then last but certainly not least, the Sharks and every other NHL team, every other pro sports team, they're in a competitive business to keep their fans. We're less than 10 games into this hockey season. Do the Sharks really want to have a, a really poor record and and translating into less hype around the team attendance? It it does not do well for business. Be, I mean, beyond the beyond the sportsmanship side of it, and playing to win and and trying your best, which again, hopefully, I've stated clear enough. I don't know if it's the. I, and then I could hear somebody saying it's great for business if you get it. But that 18.5% chance, it's, this is a true dilemma. Would you even want your team? And I, and I realized the Sharks were a struggling franchise last year, but they're also looking at last year saying, we do not want that again. We're trying to go up and away from that. Not repeat that even this year. And Connor Bedard's in the conversation. So there you go. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. A true dilemma. I I honestly, I really don't know if there is a right answer. 